Good morning, guys, and welcome to the Monday Morning Sidewalk. It's Monday, December 15th. Glad you could tune in today. I know that uh, we're all getting very busy with the holidays upon us and everything else. Uh, you know, we've got weather changes as usual, but I'm not a weatherman, so we'll just talk about fishing. What do you say? Uh, what I'm seeing lately on Facebook pages of guides that I follow, whether it's uh, Scott Summerlot or... Uh, any other number of guys, Scott and all, and some guys further down south, is it seems like further south, the saltwater fly fishing is still pretty good. As you come north and get into the Galveston system, um, the fly fishing is, is kind of tapering a little bit because the redfish are finding their way into more neutral temperature water in the guts, what we call the guts, which if you read that article last week, um, that's those areas where Heavy drainage during tidal changes creates these little finger things. You can look at it on satellite and see um, exactly how that works. But anywhere where you got major tidal movement is a good place to fish. But it's going to be off in those guts now instead of up on the flats. Um, further south, the water temperatures are still fairly temperate. So you can, it looks like from what I'm seeing, you can still catch fish sight casting in shallow water. When it comes to freshwater action in, in Texas, of course, we as fly fishers concentrate a lot on um, trout. And for a real trout experience, you can't go wrong with the Guadalupe River. They've got two things going on there. They've got the regular stockings that go on by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. And then there's also the, uh, the more trophy type trout that are stocked via size more than quantity. And you can access their uh, areas that they have that are the, the restricted waters that are controlled through their uh, program at the GRTU if you buy a lease, which is like a button and a hang tag for your car. And, of course, you've got to be a member. But uh, those fish there are really nice. I'm seeing a lot of great photos of really slabby-looking rainbow trout. And we're talking rainbow trout. Uh, for North Texas here, if, you, if you're above, say, a line that goes across Waco, a lot of us go up to Oklahoma, and there's two places that are, uh, uh, one's very, you know, de facto the most prominent place, and that is Beaver's Bend, Broken Bow area for trout there, where Oklahoma stocks very regularly. It's a beautiful place, and it's uh, uh, got, you know, a lot of great fly fishing opportunities and interesting waters to uh to work on your fly fishing abilities for rainbow trout, stock rainbow trout. Um, the other place, which is a little less, lesser known, people are starting to ask more about it, but that is the Blue River, and that's just about 80, 90 miles north of Denton, Texas. I'm only about 35 miles from the Oklahoma line here, and that place is uh, a little less attractive, but it's also got some, some interesting characteristics to it as well. So. What you can do, I have people ask me about Blue River and things like that. You can go to the uh, website, www.texasflycaster.com, and go over to the right-hand side. And if you just do a Google search of the website, it'll give you probably 30 or 40 stories on the Blue River over the years. And those stories are varied. It may be just part of a, uh, information on the Blue River, and maybe totally about the Blue River with video and everything else. Planning on going back there in the next couple of weeks. That might taper off. We might not have a Monday morning next uh, next week because of that. But um, work is lightening up, so we're definitely going to be doing a lot less talking, a lot more fishing, maybe give you some videos and stuff like that. To finish up this uh, this Monday, I just wanted to, you know, a lot of you guys will be buying fly rods for people who, you know, for Christmas and holiday shopping time. And of course, they might not have ever fly fished before, but when you're teaching them, no matter if you're a certified instructor or never taught anybody in your life and you think you can, can handle it, um, one of the things I'm, I'm kind of surprised that more instructors, I've never seen an instructor do this other than myself, I'm not certified or anything, but uh, we have bright rods that you know are issued to these certified instructors that, that allow someone to see how the rod's moving, but we never, I never see an instructor actually use bright gloves to show how their hands are working the fly rod which when you think about it the fly rod's pretty static as far as 
you know the movements there it's what you do with your hands that matters a whole lot as well so what I do is I, I use bright gloves and you can buy buff gloves in any bright color you want but what that does is it allows you to to actually show what you're doing with your hands to someone who you're trying to teach to cast a fly rod pretty effective method I think of showing the hand movements uh, think about it and uh, let me know how it works out for you I do teach and do give instructions um, to, to youth so keep that in mind thanks as always to sponsors it's a short broadcast today have a great week we'll see you next week either maybe with a Monday morning or maybe with a, uh, a video of uh, trout fishing somewhere nearby thanks again as always if you have any comments compliments complaints questions anything else go to www.texasflycaster.com